Audio Frontier. Larson. Oh, he's in. Hendrik Larson. That is sensational. Lambert. Oh, what a way to settle it. Nakamura. It's Tom Rogge. This is Celtic Daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notatfaultclaims.com. Welcome to Celtic Daft, your Celtic specific podcast from Football Daft. I am producer Ryan. Thank you very much for checking out the podcast. Um, he is back, he's happy, and he's settled. It's Chris Toll. How are you doing, Chris? Right, folks, what's happening? Happy as Larry could not be happier. <laughs> it was a, a decent weekend for the Fitback, wasn't it? It was, aye. Uh, well, I, as you know, I need to tell you straight off the bat, I never seen the game because I was working a show at the Barrowlands on Saturday night um, and I had a birthday party after it, so I only got to watch the highlights yesterday. So, Aye, happy with that, but it's a stepping stones, mate. Like I say, mm-hmm. um, we're, we're doing everything that we that we should be doing, and it's it's starting to bear fruit. So, an our cup final, don't get me wrong, it's by no means cut and dry. Tibs are a good sight, but I'm happy that we're there, and that's the main thing. Do you know, just before we, we crack on, obviously you said you were working a show at the Barrowlands. Um, every time I go, and we'll, we'll touch on the, the results for the weekend in a minute, every time I go to a wrestling show at the Barrowlands, mate, Rangers have a terrible day. So I'm going to ask ICW to start putting on more shows at the Barrowlands that I can yeah, go to. Every week. Aye. Every week, mate, we'll book it. <laughs> um, right, and also we've got a guest pundit this week. Um, he's back, and I have been instructed absolutely no silly questions. Graham McLean, how are you doing, Graham? I'm very good, guys. Um, nice to see you. Um, last couple of times I've been on the show, it's been diabolical because it's we've been horse the last couple of games. So it's nice to to come on with a win. So yeah, no. aye. Well, that's the thing. We'll, we'll get straight into it then. Obviously, we've, we've just come back off international break. Um, we've got one game to look at because of that then. Um, and it's a big one. It was cup semi final, like we've said, at Hamden. Um, we're up against St Johnson. They are the the league cup holders, also Scottish cup holders at the at a minute. Um, they've somehow became cup specialists recently, Chris. And um, put in a few decent performances. Won a good couple of cups last year, um, which was unheard of for a team like St Johnson to go and win two cups in one season. They've not had the best season so far, though. You know, they, they lost quite a few players in the summer. You know, fair play to them getting to an R Cup semi. But were you a wee bit kind of nervous going into this game, knowing what they've been doing in Cups in recent years? No. Uh, I see, I'm, I'm not, I don't get nervous for the games now because of what I've told you a hundred times. I'm just going in with an open mind, enjoying what's happening. And uh, like I say, it's starting to starting to build up a wee bit of momentum now. So it's going to get to the point where I'm at, I well, this is it. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to start getting excited at some point soon. But I'm trying my best, don't I? So, <laughs> uh, I, it's enjoy- you can't take away from St. Johnson. For what I've seen, they made it very, very difficult for Celtic. You know, so um, Davidson's got them playing really well. He's got tactics. For the big games, it seemed to, seemed to uh, reap the rewards for them. So to be able to like, end their... How many cup games in a row had they won? I mean, it's been probably two years since they last lost one, wasn't it? Aye, so uh, there have been a lot of cup games that they've won in a row. So for us to be able to put a stop to that run for them is it's quite a good thing, you know? Graham, I mentioned there about the performance um, or the performances from St. Johnson recently. Um, I'll put the same question to you. You know, were you a bit worried during this game, knowing what they can do on a kind of one-off, or were you, were you thinking similar to what I was thinking? We've we've got something good going here, and and they've they've been quite poor in the last few games, haven't they? You know, when the semi-final draw was made, I was thinking who would I least or who would I most likely to get 
in the in the kind of semi final and, and St Johnson were my pick because just looking at Rangers and Hibs, they probably could have caused us more problems than St Johnson. So I just felt with the performance that St Johnson put up, I was kind of I felt kind of vindicated in that kind of decision making. So definitely, um, you've got. I was respectful of what they've done last season, but at the same time. We've got a squad more than capable of doing a job on them, and they've done it very well on Saturday. I thought. We'll take a, a wee look at the the starting lineup then, boys. Also with a, a few injuries in the squad um, just now, so we line up with the, the user four three three. We've got Ralston, Carter, Brickers, Welsh, and Juranovic at the back. Turnbull, Beaton, McGregor in the middle. Abada, Kyogo, and Jota up front. Um, Graham, I ask you about about Jota then, since you you watched the game. You know, that first five minutes, and it sounds really daft, that first five minutes, I got a text from somebody going, I want a bit of what Jota's had for his breakfast today. Because, <laughs> it, it, mate, what was he like at the start of the game? Frightening. I, you know, he's, he's just sensational, the the boy. And um, it's just hard not to get carried away with him because we've got this kind of option to buy in him and they better just get him signed up ASCP because he's... First yeah. of January. Yeah, he's a superstar in the making and just get it done. No messing about. We've, we're terrible for it, but get it done in the first of January, like you're saying, to just do it. Back me up here, Graham. I, I stuck my neck on the line and I said he was better than Kyogo. Do you know what? If you, you asked me that on Friday, I would have said no, but asking it now, I agree with you. Do you know what? And it's daft because it's, he's just producing performance after performance and I do think he's more consistent than Kyogo as well we just they complement each other really well but I think if you were to take somebody out of the team that would really hurt us the most it would be him at the minute It's a, a really good position to be in though and you know having these two guys and we're, we're debating who's better and both of them for me are class um, I do agree with you both I think Jota for me is the one that's the, the standout just now. Oh, He's a kind of fair player. Your team, boy. Mate, I know. Team. I have, mate. I will quite happily put my neck in the line and say that I have changed my mind on that one. Don't get me wrong. I love Kyogo and it, it's no it's not slight on him whatsoever. But I think. I tell you what, Ryan, I've not got a jot of key ring. <laughs> mate, I, neither have I'm getting one. <laughs> I, I, I've not even got my keys handy to show this one on the video there. But I, I've got a wee Kyogo key ring and it's class. Um, the other performance I wanted to, to ask you about, Graham, mate, well, mainly Graham, yeah. um, was Abada on the, the right hand side. Me and Chris have said for a few weeks on this show that he is he's got all the talent there to be a really good player for us. It doesn't show it anywhere near enough. I thought this was probably one of his poorer games. He was very, very quiet for the majority, wasn't he? Yeah, do you know what? It's I think it's just getting to the time where he needs maybe a wee bit of rest from the team and it's Forrest coming back to kind of full fitness is coming at the right time from. It's I think I'm just putting it down to his age more than anything. He's got a lot of developing and not a nurturing to do. So I don't want to just throw the guy in and completely burn him out and which is just gonna be detrimental to him going forward. But I think Forrest coming back to full fitness is coming at the bang on right time for us at the minute. Um yeah so definitely he's a, he's he's a good player but just needs to kind of limit his game time at the minute. Yeah. Chris, we've um, we've discussed James Forrest on this this podcast ever since we started doing it, or ever since I came on it with you, um, on what, what we think about James Forrest. For me, I've always said that he, he got labelled this um, the stats man's favourite player, James Forrest, because his stats were sometimes outweighing his performances. But... I think me and you argued about this before, and I said to you, I'd much rather have somebody who was putting in decent stats than putting in nothing at all. And six to nine minutes in the on the clock in this game, on he comes, James Forrest, four minutes later, the ball's in the back of the net. If James Forrest gets back to full fitness, like Graham's saying there, that front three that we've been kind of singing about all season with Jota and Kyogo and Abada when he's on form, does James Forrest go in there and make that 10 times better for you? Aye. I, mate, I'm I'm sick of watching a batter. Every time he gets the ball, he gives it away. He, he passes the ball to the other team all the time. It's he's he gives the ball away so often. And if people want to ever go at me for this, please go back and watch the last few games that he's played in. He's he gives the ball away constantly. 
cons. I'd actually like to see his passing uh, percentage, like completed pass percentage, because he's he gives it away far too often. James Forrest is a much better option for me, but I think we need to address that position in January to get some new blood in there. And I think uh, Ange knows that because he's he's coming out and he's saying that he he knows that there's glaring gaps in what he wants to do. So hopefully he's identified the players that he wants. Hopefully the board are going to back him because I think I think we need to go all in on him now because I think what he's doing he's he's proving it. You know he's proving that he's got something. You know and see as long as Rangers are struggling as well, that's going to give the players a wee bit of pep to hammer on. You know, they can see that there might be a wee bit of light at the end of the tunnel in it, uh, this season. So uh, I that that position for me needs to be addressed, definitely. Do you agree with that one? Graham, do you agree with Chris on that? Yeah, um, I'm not sure that I'm just going to see it as a, a priority in January. It might go back and visit that in the summer because Forrest has come back and a bad I might hit form again. Maybe I'm being a bit more hopeful than anything, but I think with Forrest and Abada, they are they've covered it quite well. I do agree with Chris that it, Abada's kind of it started off pretty pretty well in August and September, but it's just it's tailing off a little bit, and I don't know if that's just again maybe is it down to his age? Is it down to him not playing as many games? Is, it has been used to in Glasgow, so it is, it is one that needs to be addressed, but I think I'm just going to prioritise other sort of spaces in the team at the minute, so I don't expect much to happen in January. We um, we, we touched on the goal there, but it was a, it was one of these difficult games, I think, that, that needed a bit of a, a bit of luck, because, you know, St. Johnson, for all, I gave him credit earlier on for how they've done in cuts before, it was a, it was a very boring attack from them and they had 11 guys behind the ball they they weren't good to win the game you know they, they had a couple of chances but that was really much it we needed a bit of kind of luck to get the goal here and we got it you know a, a, a slack ball back to Xander Clark he's kind of hoofed it up in the air Jota's won it took it down the wing pinged it across um, the boy said it with his hand it was a penalty regardless if it went in or not so um, going with Celtic's recent history probably would have missed the penalty, so I'm quite happy that we eventually scored. Um, Chris, we touched on Jota earlier, but what did you make as what created in the left for that goal when you seen it? Well, loads of people were apparently shouting that it was a handball in the build-up, but I think it comes between the both of the players and kind of hits both of them in the hand. So. I think it, it runs on his shoulder, doesn't it? You know, it's kind of come across um, and just went on his shoulder and he's, he's moved it on. I but like you say there, the minute the ball drops to the ground, that there's nobody getting near him. He's, right. he's outstanding. He, he really is. I, I love watching him play football. And that, that's pretty much the biggest compliment that you can give a footballer. You know what I mean? I, I actually enjoy sitting down and watching him playing football. I thought so, you were going to say a, a Chris Tolsey the approval there. I thought was just... <laughs> no. no. There's a few fucking duds of fun that, believe you me. <laughs> Do you know, just touching on that goal that we scored, I don't know if you guys have kind of seen the, the replay of it, but the, the way that Kyogo's pressing down on top of his under clock, it's making him make that decision to just hoof it up long. We've then okay. run back possession and it's just, it's led to that goal. So I think we're just kind of style and philosophy. It's really, it bears fruit at times because players in the, the Scottish Premier League, they can't deal with that kind of intensity okay. right in their face. So it's it's really, really, it's working and it's it shows the fitness levels of the, the team that's going on just now. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a, it's a good point, Graham. It's actually, I was going to say that there before you before you brought it up. You know, the, the work rate for Akio go chasing down, chasing down every ball, to be honest. You know, there was quite a few times that he, he was chasing down Zander Clark and he was he was struggling a little bit to kind of get the ball in his feet and away quickly just with that press that kyogo has got. Um, Chris, how how important for you is, is that for Kyogo, that work rate that people don't really give him the credit for sometimes? Do you know what I, I touched on this a few weeks back, Ryan? Um, that I think the the high intensity pressing that we that we that we show in games, we didn't have the fitness levels to continue it for the full ninety minutes at the start of the season, and I think that we were we were losing late goals quite a lot uh, in in games. But 
you know, as the season uh, gets longer and uh, the players do more work in the gym and their cardio and stuff like that, then you're going to see, I think it will take until possibly maybe around about March, April before you see the finished product with us, not the fully finished product, but like the full intensity for the full 90 minutes. And like, like uh, Graham was saying there, it's angry. It's a it's a nightmare for Scottish yeah, teams. It, it really is a nightmare for them. Um, and if we can get the players in that can perform the duties uh, in the positions that we're maybe struggling for a wee bit just now, then you know, fucking God help them. Definitely. Yeah. So, I'll, um, before we move on then to talk about the the cup finals coming up and then the other game we've got this week to look forward to. Um, I'll get your Celtic rated and Celtic dafty. Graham, I'll go for you on this one because Chris never seen the the game. Uh, if you need to go with your Celtic rated, who would you pick? Uh, easy one, Jota, for all day long for that. <laughs> nah, e- easy one, that. Um, and what about your Celtic dafty as well, mate? My Celtic dafty is going to need to be Joe Hart because he almost cost us a goal in the first half, which would have changed the whole oh, course of the game. So, so I forgot about that. that. Yeah, I, I, mean, I totally forgot about that. Thankfully, I forgot about I, that. What was he doing? Dally Dallion on the ball for a change? I it just Dally Dallion, and then with the St. Johnson players just jumping on top of him, and he's just booted off him, and it's flew right past Joe Hart and just past the post, thankfully. So, um, we did get away with one, but um, yeah, that would have changed the whole course of the game, and it would have given them something to hold on to as well, which would have made it 10 times harder for us. Good stuff. Right, so we move on then. Uh, League Cup final to to Hibs. But we need to, we need to touch on how Hibs got to the, the Cup final, boys. It was um, Sunday, 4 o'clock kickoff at Hamden. They're got up against Rangers. They've not got a manager. They've got a, a youth guy in just now. Um, Gio's in the crowd. I'm sitting watching it. Actually, no, that's a lie. I wasn't watching it to begin with. You know, I got a notification on my phone. Early on, eight minutes, Martin Boyle, 1-0, and I thought, this game's getting put on, right? So, so I've put it on. Um, we know what's happened. We'll not touch on it too much. Do you want to hear that? Chris, um, Chris, Stevie and John are currently recording Rangers staff, so they'll be discussing it if you want to listen to the, the Rangers one. But Hibs getting through that game, boys, that's something that wasn't really expected beforehand because everybody seems to think that Rangers are this, this animal this year, that, you know, they're... They're going to come back fighting. You know, they had one good 6 0 result away to Motherwell, and they think that's them back on it now. But, Graham, I'll, I'll ask you, you know, looking at 6 1. 6 1, sorry, 6 1. I forgot they went 1 0. Um, <laughs> you know, they've went behind in 13 games this season. And they got a penalty. Rangers have lost the first goal in 13 games. Nah, this season. Six in a row as well, just now. So, um, yeah, it's it's not something that came as a surprise that Hibs uh, went not, one. You know, and that's going to stop, don't you? <laughs> January the second. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I was going. To, I was going to say there, Graham. Are they going for a ten? Aye. <laughs> going for a sure fifty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Aye. Right, listen. We, we we know how the game went. Everybody knows how the the game turned out. Hibs ran out three one winners. Very very convincing performance for Hibs and a very unconvincing performance for for Rangers. Um. Graham Hibs in the final. What you what you thinking? Do you think we've got enough to to kind of handle Hibs? I know we're, we're, a month, we're a month away, aren't we, still? But yeah, do you know what? I've had... Remember, we did them a doing in their own fucking midden. Yeah, it's it's just a very Hibs performance, isn't it? Because they can turn up and they could be ending their day, but nine times out of ten, we should be taking care of them. With it. and that's not being arrogant. It's just it's just how these things play out. I mean, Hibs are playing Ross County on Wednesday night, and you know, I, don't, I expect Ross County to end up taking something off them because it's just what Hibs do. So. If Hibs turn up and play how they did yesterday, then we're going to be in for a really, really tough game. But in the final, we're going to be right up for it. We're going to have the majority of the crowds because they're not getting their, their half allocation. So um, I would hopefully we can get that one over the line. I fully expect to. Would be you, Chris, shaking the same? I don't know. I'm just really fucking looking forward to it, man. I, I, I can't wait for it. It's... I don't know why, but this is, I've just got a feeling that this is going to be a fucking really good season for us. So the, oh, uh, oh, he said it. He said right, it. Uh, it's out there now. Aye, that's, um, if you listen to the podcast, you know that Chris told, and rightly so, 
get these cars a bit close to his chest this season. But is that a bit of excitement I can see geeking through there, Chris? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start getting excited at some point. I may as well make it a fucking cup final, <laughs> not <what> I mean. <laughs> no, quite, quite right, mate, quite right. Also, um, if they wants to get me a ticket for the cup final, that would be lovely as well. I'll keep an eye out for you, mate. I'll keep an eye out. See, see, see if I get you on, mate. Um, right, we've got a game coming up this week as well. Boys, we're playing Thursday night. We are away to to Leverkusen on on Thursday. Um, it's a quarter to six kickoff. You know, we've came for a, a bit of a high in the weekend, getting the cup final. What are we thinking for us, um, Chris? You were obviously off for a couple of weeks there. Um, one of the boys, David, that we had on, predicted that we are going to get out of this group and gave us good, very good, valid reasons why we were going to get out of this group. And I found it quite tough to disagree with him. You know, obviously looking at the results that you know, if we get a result on on Thursday against Leverkusen, it all comes into our last game. Leverkusen haven't been the best in the league over the last few weeks, and we're starting to find a bit of form. Do you think Jamie can maybe pull it off, mate? I would rather go into the conference. Because I think we can we can last in the conference for a few more rounds. You know what I mean? So I know that that might be a wee bit defeatist, but uh, I don't see us getting anything for Leverkusen. I really don't see us getting anything for Leverkusen. So, do you know, and, what, Chris, I, just on that, but you said, Dermot, just to, to jump in, like, I agreed, we, I would have agreed with you a couple of months ago on the conference, right? I would have agreed that that's the level that we can go and we can do something in it. However, see the more that we're going on, I'm actually thinking, see if we do get out of this group, right? Which none of us, none of us thought we could do, right? If we can get a result against Leverkusen and, and get out of this group, what a testament to Ange that would be for what he's put in place to the point I, where we, we'd never expected Europe at all this season, never mind potentially getting out of the Europa. Like I'm saying, this is Monday night, you know, we've got a few days to go, everything can change on Thursday and I could be saying, you know, Ange out by next Monday. But, <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's just one of the ones, If what a testament to him that would be if he could get us out of this group after everything that we've kind of went through in the last six months or so. It would be, mate. It would be, but that's not the question you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, what were you, what were you thinking for, for Thursday, mate? Um, go, just going back in the first leg, that was, it was never a 4-0 game. Never a 4-0 game. If we'd taken our, our chances early on in that game, it would have been a different story. We might have got a draw out of um, I know we could be yeah, four nil. was Billy the fish that night and all exactly. Remember. Yeah, there's just so many things just didn't go for us that night, and the keeper's playing like his bloody buffon. So you never know. Do you know results like this come when you least expect it? Look at Lazio and look at um, some of the results we've picked up. I don't expect us to do to get a, even a draw, but do you know what? There's just something in my back of my mind saying you never know. So I'm going to go. I'm going to enjoy the game. We've got the conference in the bag anyway, so we've got nothing to lose on Thursday. Let's just go for it and see what we can do. But even even then, we need we need uh, Firms Faros to beat Betty, don't we? I think we so, need results to go our way somehow, and we need we're going to need to beat Betis ourselves at Parkhead. So are we not only are we not only one point behind Betis now? Let me double check. As we're speaking, I can check the now. Um, hold on. I think Betis have got seven and we've got six, so I think that would probably be a bit right. Um, so essentially, it doesn't matter um, if if we lose to Leverkusen, but Fernand Schwarzer somehow managed to beat Betis. Comes down to the last game anyway. Um, we are currently, aye, we are a point behind Betis. They're on seven, we're on six. No. So if we can get, I mean, if we can get a win against Leverkusen. Ideal. If we can get a draw out it, then it goes into a, a final game shootout, I think, between us and Betis. Because um, yep. just looking at goal, goal difference, we're minus two, they're minus one. Yes, that's as well. Yeah. Aye, but and this, is, this all depends on Betis' result against Fern Square also. Aye, that, so, aye, what I'm saying is that if we can get something, it depends on what happens in, in that game. Aye, if we can get a, even if we can get a draw out of the game, we'll go no, to seven. Because if we get a draw and they get a <clears throat> They get a win. win. They, they, are three, they are three points ahead of us. Aye, right. we should so, still take it out of a final game based on goal difference, wouldn't it? I, 
well, like we get, we've got three away goals, but that doesn't count in Europe anymore, doesn't it? No, I think it's just goal difference you go by just now. Or, goal difference. Or, or, or head to head, I think. Ah, head, head, head to head first, then goal difference. So, so we need to beat them by more than one goal, then basically. Depending on how the results go. The fucking captain factor on it. <laughs> Aye. Aye, mate, listen, worst things have happened. Mine Rosenberg put us through a couple of years Gally, ago. Yeah, they got a, a, a late minute goal against uh, Leipzig, so you never know. Stranger things have happened, boys. Stranger yeah, things definitely. have happened. That's so, true. And, and I think Chris has now just done that math there and he's here like Scott Steiner thinking, here, you can do this. <laughs> I've got half the brain that you've got. <laughs> There's a 33 or third percent chance <laughs> What in the sacrifice? Sorry, sorry. Right, right, hang, right, hang. <laughs> it's Nakamura. It's a brilliant cricket. Right, so boys, there's no no real news in uh, this week other than tomorrow morning, which is probably going to be before this podcast comes out anyway. So it's out now. Um, the Selic Christmas advert is out. Um, Chris, you're looking forward to seeing a wee bit of Kyogo there in that one. He's got to be the star at the top of the tree, hasn't he? And uh, Graham, I don't know if you've seen the the clip on Twitter that they've put up. Uh, they, they, they've taken it. They've taken what we've said. Your man Jota is done up like George Michael. Thank God for that, because that would have just been a total waste of our signing <laughs> anyway. So it's, it had to be done. So yeah, that's, that's what we cool. need to do is we need to think about in the long term. He's going to. Uh, we'll put a contract down in front of him and he's going to be like, do I need to dress up with fucking <laughs> Tina Turner or something like that this year? <laughs> it's like when we signed fucking Freddie Lundberg to fucking put him in the windies with the pants on, wasn't it? Remember that a couple of years ago? Uh, it's the only reason we got Freddie Lundberg to sell it. But I've after a few head pairs of Celtic boxers anyway, so it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a couple of years ago. Ryan's the same as me. He still thinks 10 years ago is 1990. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. That was a... Uh, while well, I go that now, wasn't it? Fucking Freddie Lundberg. Um, McDonald, very good with Hesselink! They've done it! So that is it for Celtic Daft. Thank you very much for listening. Remember, if you're listening on Apple, um, Spotify, just rate and subscribe on there. Make sure you get the podcasts. Uh, Chris, you'll be back on the main show this week with the boys. Um, yes, sir. Looking forward to it, mate. Yes, sir. Got a few uh, issues up my sleeves for the boys. Um, aye, and I'll make sure I'm shaved and looking clean. Good man, good man. All right, Tate, well, boys, as always, thank you very much for, for being here with me. Thank you very much, everybody, listening to Celtic Daft. Um, but for now, Graham, thanks very much, and I'll see you at the cup final. Yeah, and Graham's getting a ticket, it's your belter. <laughs> and Crystal, hell, hell, trucks. Audio Frontier.